Controversy in the FNAF world is not something unheard of. And if each entry of the franchise, there seems to be something that the fanbase hates, either being something to do with the lore or the game itself. Today, we'll talk about the latter. This game is without a doubt the most controversial FNAF game ever. While Scourge Breach does have a lot of haters, pretty much everyone in the community can agree that this game is without a doubt the worst one. What game am I talking about? I'll take a closer look at Five Nights at Freddy's first original mobile game, FNAF AR Special Delivery. In August of 2018, Scott Coffin revealed in a FNAF show interview that he was working on an AR FNAF game. He didn't give much details, but he confirmed that the game would be very scary. Oh my god, no way! We would later get confirmation that the team behind the game would be Illumix, a company who develops AR apps. On September of 2019, we would get the teaser trailer and later the announcement trailer, which revealed that the title of the game would be Five Nights at Freddy's AR Special Delivery. Both of these trailers were highly praised by the FNAF community. Everyone was really excited for the game, the presentation was really good and fans were happy that the first FNAF game not developed by Scott was looking good. The trailer included a lot of fan favorite animatronics, two of which we will talk about later. Two months later, Illumix dropped the release trailer, including the one and only Markiplier, which made everyone really happy. It really looked like Illumix was a fan of the franchise and wanted to deliver a great game to the community. The game was later released on November 22nd in 2019 on Android and iOS. No knock you though. When the game released, the reception was overall positive. People were happy with the attention of detail of the animatronics design and animation. The gameplay, while simple, was still somewhat enjoyable and kinda stressful. There were regular updates where Lumix released new animatronics and skins, celebrating Christmas, Easter and even America for some reason. There were a lot of weird skins. Some of them were generally really good, that would either get official merch or appear in future games. Some skins though were reskins of the previous ones, but not with a lot of changes. If you want to battle with an animatronic, you would get parts to upgrade your endoskeleton and potentially their plush suit. However, not everything was perfect. The game is free to play, so there are a lot of microtransactions. The in-game purchases are parts, remnant and fast coins, this one being the one where you can buy it for real money. You can buy lures to attract a specific animatronic. If you didn't catch it, you would lose the lore. There were some upgrades for the encounters like a flashlight battery. And finally, there are the packs. There are a lot of them, but all of them include a plush suit of a specific animatronic, their lures, and maybe their CPU. Every animatronic has their CPU, and if you give it to one of your endoskeletons, it gets its moveset, if one call it that. Why do you send it to someone? You could buy some of these packs with fast coins, but some of them were only obtainable with real money. There was also the option to buy, with real money, only one of the items, like a plush suit. These prices are way too high. It's just not worth it to waste almost $10 on something like a plush suit. That the only thing it does for you is to watch it repeat the same animation. Don't get me wrong, the animations in this game are fantastic, but it's not worth to spend the money on it. If you really want to see the animation, you can watch a docker video or something, I don't know. So while there are some bad things, the community saw the potential of the game and hoped that Illumix would listen to the feedback. Well, I think you know where this is going. Things would not take the right turn. On February 2021, a photo booth mode was released. You can take photos with your animatronics and do some really cool stuff with it. So the mode itself is not bad. But the biggest problem is that to unlock it, you need to pay 4,000 fast coins, which is around $30. This is just downright bad. A feature where you take photos of FNAF characters is not and will never be worth $30. The prices for skins were already expensive, but this? You could buy FNAF 1 through 5 and still have some change. The community, of course, were against the price tag. While everyone agreed that the mode itself was fun, it shouldn't cost that much money. Okay, that was bad, but things won't get worse, right? <laughs> it got worse. After a couple of months since the release of the game, we barely got new animatronics. Everything was just skins and skins and skins. 
So when we're back in the reveal trailer, you could see Plush Rap and Lefty. Now, these are popular FNAF characters, and there was a lot of demand for them. Well, Plush Trap only got released one year after the game released, and Lefty, well, he still hasn't come to the game yet. It's been almost 4 years since the game came out, and they haven't released Lefty. Which is crazy to think about, because not only he showed up in the first trailer, but he was also Datamite. So he's in the game files, but Elmix still hasn't dropped him. Hashtag free Lefty. But like I said before, the skins in the game are really cool, but people will lose interest when new characters take ages to release. Well, um, okay, this is not looking good. But hey, the gameplay was still the same, yeah? Like, they won't change it to make it worse, they made the gameplay worse. Okay, so the animatronic encounters were very simple. You would use your phone camera to move around and try to see static using the flashlight. The animatronic would run towards you and you need to use a quick control shock. shock. Do this three times and you would win. There were some animatronics that have unique ways to beat it, like use a Freddy mask or collect minorinas. Now Illumix must have thought, hmm, let's make more money. And on May of 2021, they changed a little bit of the gameplay. Now, animatronics have a health bar, and the higher your player level is, the more damage you deal. Leveling up in this game is not easy. It takes so long to level up, and it's just not fun. Also, if you start the game from the beginning and try to defeat a hard animatronic like Springtrap, you will deal almost no damage, so battles will take minutes to beat if you manage to win. Well, my friend, that's where buffs come into play. You see, in this machine, whatever it is, there are three spots. Here you can put a power-up that will help you when fighting an animatronic. These are, for example, giving you a shield, so if an animatronic attacks you and you miss the control shock, you get a second chance. Now, how do you get these power-ups? Well, you get them by leveling up, which I already said it was a hard thing to do. Or, you could use your fast coins to buy packs in the shop. The thing is that the buffs you get are random so you're not guaranteed to get the one you want, basically loot boxes. And these were not cheap. People were not happy, and Linux didn't hear the feedback for years, and all they made encounters basically pay to win. So what did Linux do? Nothing. I'm pretty sure they haven't done anything that the fans wanted, except that some entirely wanted, of course. Fans saw the potential of the game, and they wanted an actual good thing. Well, something like that happened. On December of 2021, Illumix released the Dark Circus Encore DLC. Here you are in the circus doing puzzles and fighting animatronics, two of which were already in the game. But a final boss, if you want to call that, was a brand new skin, Great Escape Golden Freddy. If you beat the DLC, you will get the Golden Freddy skin plusher and its CPU. Now the game mode itself was really good, the puzzles were fun, and the fights were really cool, but there was a huge problem. I think you can guess what it is, but I'm going to tell you anyway. The DLC costs $20. Well, yes, you can replay it every time you want. The rewards are just not worth it. One thing that I forgot to mention was that it takes around 40 minutes to beat. I'm sorry, but this is just not worth the price. Okay, things were not looking good for FNAF AR. Fans were not happy with the current state of the game. Illumix responded to this by saying, My charm here is done. Yeah, they haven't played the game since the DLC came out. From 2022 to today, there are reruns of the events that we already had years ago. So no new electronics or skins, no changes in the prices, no new DLC, it's nothing. The last time Illumix has mentioned FNAF AR was in January 28th in 2022 and it was just to talk about the photo booth competition. Now you're probably wondering, well, what is Illumix cooking? Well, they are making NFTs. I think this speaks for itself. So yeah, I think we can say that FNAF AR was abandoned. A sad fate to a very interesting game that had so much potential. Thankfully, there's a mod called Forsaken AR, where it adds new electronics regularly, like in Cards <laughs> I mean Popcos. <laughs> so if you ever want to experience FNAF AR, just play Forsaken AR. And this was the most controversial FNAF game ever. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe if you liked the video. Tell me in the comments your thoughts on FNAF AR and your favorite animatronic or skin in game. Well, that's it for me. Adios.